Okay, as I was explaining in one of my last videos that you listen to and you really seem to really enjoy, so let's try this again. All atheism means is I lack of belief in God, right? That's what atheists will tell you morning, noon, and night. All atheism means is I lack of belief in God. Okay, we have a problem. Why? Because that is not an ideology. Is it? No. It's solely a negation. Period. All atheism means is I lack a belief in God. That's not an ideology. That's not a set of shared principles. That's not a set of shared values. And that's not a set of shared ethics. It is a negation solely. Okay, so what? Well, you can't build a society around a negation. If you, the anti-theist, succeed in dismantling religion, what are you going to construct your society around on the positive side? Again, all atheism means is a lack of belief in God. Great. That's not an ideology. It's not a set of shared principles. It's not a set of shared values. A healthy functioning society needs those, a set of shared beliefs, a set of shared ethics to rally around or it cannot function as a society. So if you succeed in dismantling religion, God forbid, <laughs> God forbid, get it? <laughs> God forbid. Uh, that was funny. Anyways, if you succeed in dismantling religion, God help us. <laughs> there we go again. It's, it's fun. Uh, it's, all right, it's not good. All right, anyways. I was having fun with it. All right, fine. You want to be a stick in the mud about it? Be a stick in the mud. As I said before, pour a little water in the hole. Or no, pour dirt in the hole, pour some water in, put a stick in, bang, you got you. That's a stick in the mud. You're being a stick in the mud. But anywho, back to the subject at hand. Okay, so you have a society. You have succeeded in dismantling Religion, woohoo, we're free, we're free. Yeah, you're free from the dread tyranny of Christianity, but the society that you are building in its place is going to need something. It's going to need something to rally around, a set of shared principles, values, and beliefs. We have sort of that in the United States of America. Free speech, things like that. You've heard of free speech? Did you ever hear free speech? Well, it's a shared value and a shared belief. We believe these rights to be inalienable, did you ever hear that one? We believe these truths to be, no, that all men are endowed with their creator. See, that's a problem too, because that's, that's a God concept right there. Hard to build a set of shared beliefs without a God concept, I'll tell you that much. Whether God exists or not, does not exist, religion fills a key function in society. And you tear it down at your peril. Why? Because you are going to be faced with the void. As I have said before, and the only thing that atheism gives you in the void is a negation. All atheism means is a lack of belief in God. Bang. It doesn't mean you have, you have no shared principles or values or ethics of which to conduct, to which to rebuild your society on. And a healthy society needs them. I didn't say wants, I said needs them. Needs. So, what are you going to do? How, what are you going to do when you have successfully dismantled religion? It's going to have to be replaced with something. I mean, the smart atheist is probably already going, humanism, yay, humanism, humanism is so awesome. What does humanism mean exactly? That's potentially an okay answer. Define it. You're going to have to have some core principles in, in there. And you're going to have to have some key beliefs. And guess what? You're going to have to get everybody in your society to assent to those beliefs. How are you going to do that? I'll tell you exactly how religion does it. We tell stories. We tell stories on Sunday and Wednesday, and those stories contain our shared beliefs, our values, and our ethics, and we repeat those stories, and then we talk about those stories, and we show little movies about those stories, and the people participated of their own choice. And the values and the ethics get inside of them, and they keep the society, they put invisible guardrails up in the society that you inhabit, and you reap the benefits of those stories being told to people morning, noon, and night in the society that you already inhabit. So you dismantle those storytelling those storytelling from preacher men, fools at your peril. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what, what, what are we calling them? I'm not even sure what we're calling them. Do you understand the problem? Recognize the problem clearly. Society needs religion, period, full stop, needs. And if there's no God, then it looks even more, then the evidence is even more conclusive that it's, religion is filling out some mysterious biolog biological evolutionary function that we actually really desperately need as a society. 
and atheism does not provide it. Why? Because it is not a shared system of values, it is not a shared system of ethics, and it is not a shared system of beliefs. How do you get your society to cohere? That's a real question. If you don't think it's a real question, you're not really, you know, you're not really uh, challenging yourself to think clearly on the subject. You're not. Because that's a really important question. Douglas Murray put it like this in the Sam Harris debate. The only thing that I, that I hate worse than religion is the thought of living in a world without religion. That's a really good way of putting it. I'm not sure if that's exactly how he phrased it. See, we the Christians have a set of shared principles. We have a set of shared values. We have a set of shared beliefs that we all sort of buy into to one degree or another. Yeah, we got Protestants and Catholics and they don't agree about X, Y, Z, P, D, Q. But the core of the faith gets preserved and it gets put inside of each new practitioner of the faith. And ultimately, your society needs to have something like that, some mechanism like that, where you have some mutually agreed upon set of values and ethics and principles. And then you need to have some sort of delivery system where you get those values, ethics, and principles from the abstract into the individual. If you can think of another way of doing it other than telling of stories and retelling of stories, you know, I can't. In other words, if you, can, if you can think of another way of doing it other than building a, re, a new religion, consciously constructing a religion out of the old one, maybe, that's the only thing I can think of. Outside of that, I can't imagine what, what, how you could possibly build something to take its place. Say so your parents give you ethics. Who gave the ethics to the parents? See, so you're, you're still reaping the benefits of a Judeo-Christian ethic that is floating around in a lot of you and you don't even know how it got there. And you want to take it down. And as I'll point out in other videos, religion provides invisible guardrails for the society at large. You dismantle them at your peril as we've already seen. And one of the things the invisible guardrails was, was guarding us against was cuckoo clock religions, cult-like religions, cult-like versions of Christianity. We have more of those nowadays. In the absence of the strong mainstream you know, kind of ecumenical Protestant light that everybody used to pr practice circa 1955. Circa 1955, we had a powerful mainstream faith. 89% of the population bought into, and it was somewhat ecumenical. It was a lot less anti-science. We have dismantled that. You know, not necessarily voluntarily, not necessarily on purpose or consciously, but we have. It's disappeared. And in its place has, been, has become a power vacuum. And the irony and the paradox of that power vacuum is one of the things that has risen up in, that, in the void is the new scary cult-like types of religion that you hate the most. You, the anti-theist, hate them the most. You do recognize, okay, that all religion isn't as bad as other religions. You say, Craig Reed is really weird with this Christianity. Do you want to meet the, the jihadist version of me? <laughs> <You know? laughs> the, the, the guy who's going to behead you in the Saudi Arabian desert version of me? No, you don't. Why? Because there's a really big difference in our faith. And you don't even want to meet the, the, you know, the freaky Noah's Ark Christian version of me who wants to stone the homosexual to death. You don't even want to meet them. Why? Because there's a really big difference between our faith. And you need to start differentiating between powerful, mainstream, ecumenical, we can all agree that at least that's a decent faith for everybody else to be practicing, types of faiths, and scary, weirdo, cult-like Christians. Because they're out there. But, the point is, the real point, is you, the anti-theist, need to solve need to solve. You can't just dismantle and then, oh, it's all hunky-dory. We tore down religion. Great. The great oppressor is gone. Now you have a society of people, and those people need values and ethics, and they need to all agree upon them. So you need to replace it with something. That's all. That's all for now. Yeah, whatever. Okay. I'm in.